A2P10 DLC. What is it? Why is it important? And how do we get it set up in high level as quickly and easily as possible? Let's talk about it. So A2P stands for application to person and 10 DLC stands for 10 digit long code. Essentially, it's a set of rules put in place by the US government and various phone carriers like AT&T, Verizon, so on and so forth, just to make sure that businesses aren't spamming their customers through SMS. So why is this important? Long story short, if you want to use SMS marketing capabilities within high level, you need to, to have this set up. So if you don't, you will not be able to message your customers and your leads that are based in the US through SMS. Simple as that. So when it comes to getting this all set up in high level, there's two key considerations. Number one, you may be setting this up for your own business. And number two, you may be setting this up on behalf of one of your clients. In either case, the process is going to be essentially exactly the same. So let's get into it. So once you're in your high level account, the first thing you're going to do is go to settings. And then under your business profile section, you're going to want to make sure that all of the information on this page is filled out accurately, either for your business or for your client's business. So this is going to be a super important step because this is one of the most common reasons I see applications getting denied is simply because the information that we're submitting about the business is not actually accurate and doesn't match what's legally registered for that business. So we'll go through, just make sure all the general information is correct. Make sure the legal business name is correct. What matches all the legal documents for that business, put in the website, so on and so forth. Make sure you fill out the address. Again, this all has to be accurate. The business information, you'll select the business type, the industry, the registration ID type, and the registration number. Again, accuracy is super important here. And then finally, you'll put in the authorized representative information. So this can be your contact information. This can be your client's contact information. Uh, but again, just make sure that it is a valid uh, contact. So once you've done that, the next thing you'll do is go to phone numbers and then trust center. So if you don't see trust center here for whatever reason, that may be because LC phone has not been enabled for this sub account. So you'll just go to your agency settings, make sure that LC phone is enabled for the sub account. And then you should see trust center here. And again, if you want to double check that you can go into advanced settings and see that lead connector is the SMS provider. So if you don't see lead connector here, you'll need to go into your agency settings and then change that under the agency phone settings. Another thing while we're here that you can double check is the SMS compliance. So you'll just want to make sure that both of these are checked on during the time that we're submitting this A2P application. If you want to come back here and turn these off at a later date, that's totally up to you. Um, but for this application, you just want to make sure that both of these check marks are on. So going back to the trust center, you'll see the A2P wizard. So this is where we're going to be focusing for actually submitting our A2P application. So to get started with this, we'll just click start registering now. So the first is the business registered in US or Canada. You'll select yes or no. Most of you watching this is probably going to be yes. So we'll click continue. Next, it's going to pull in all of the business details. So this is going to be pulled directly from the business information or business profile section that we just filled out. So again, we want to double check this, make sure everything is accurate. If it is not correct and does not match your legal business information, then your application will get denied at this step. So just please double check this and click continue. Same thing with the address, just double check it and then click continue. And same thing with authorized representative, just make sure we have a valid email address and a valid phone number and then click continue. So for brand details, you have two options here, either low volume standard or high volume standard. For 99% of you, low volume standard is going to make the most sense. More likely than not, you're not going to be sending out over 600,000 segments per day. So just click low volume standard, click the uh, acknowledge checkbox, and then click continue. And then for campaign details. So this is again, a part that a lot of people get tripped up on. So to make this process as simple and easy for you guys as possible, I put together a little A2P cheat sheet that is going to have all the templates for all these fields. So I've included a link in the description where you can snag this cheat sheet. 
So what you're gonna do is just follow the instructions here. So campaign use case, low volume mixed. Campaign use case, low volume mixed. So use case description, we're just gonna copy and paste it. So in these templates, you'll see in bold, there's a few areas here that we need to kind of fill in the blanks. So the first one here is gonna be your landing page um, slash opt-in form link. So if you already have a landing page or an opt-in form that has a valid privacy policy slash terms of service linked to that opt-in form, then you should be good to go. You just need to grab the URL to that landing page or that opt-in form, just paste it into this template here and you're off to the races. Um, however, if you or your client do not already have a valid landing page or opt-in form that has a terms of service and privacy policy page linked to that opt-in form, don't worry. I've also created a snapshot that you can easily import into your high-level account that already has all these things pre-built for you. So I'll touch on that in just a second on how to import that and how to get that all set up. Um, but for the sake of this initial example here, we'll just copy and paste everything over. So sample message one, sample message two, basically all of the, um, the fields that you see here, you're just gonna copy and paste over into the relevant fields here. So with the sample messages, each of these sample messages needs to have four key components. Number one is gonna be the contact's name. Number two is gonna be your name. Number three is gonna be the company name. And number four is going to be opt out language. So just to walk through what that looks like here in the template, we have contact name, your name, company name, and then opt out language. So again, you'll need to fill in the blanks for your name and your company name. But assuming you have that all in place, you should be good to go. And then for these checkboxes, I would recommend just leaving these as is with their default values. And then that should be good to go. And then user consent, again, we'll just grab these from the cheat sheet. All right, so how do lead slash contacts consent to receive messages? Again, this one is really important. This is another really common way that I see a lot of these A2P applications getting uh, rejected or denied is not having a valid terms of service and privacy policy linked to the opt-in page. So this part right here is really important. Um, I'm gonna be covering how to set this up if you don't already have this in place in just a second. And then the last piece here is just gonna be the opt-in message. So we'll just copy and paste this back over. All right, so assuming you have filled in all these um, fill in the blank pieces, you should be able to submit. However, if you don't have that uh, opt-in form with the terms of service and privacy policy, then this is what you're gonna do. So you're gonna come back over into our cheat sheet and I've included a link to the snapshot here that already has a pre-built template terms of service and privacy policy, and also has the opt-in form that you'll need for this process. So what you're, you're gonna do is just click on this snapshot link. If you've never imported a snapshot before, it is super easy. It's gonna ask, do you wanna import the snapshot to your account? You'll just click yes, import now. And now that A2P compliance snapshot should show up under your imported snapshots. So what you're gonna do is just go into your sub accounts you're gonna find the specific sub account that you wanna import the snapshot to. So let's just say, for example, it was this one right here. We would click manage client, click on the actions button right here, click load snapshot, and then you're gonna select the A2P compliance snapshot from the dropdown. You'll click proceed. You'll see we're gonna import a few custom values, a form and a uh, funnel here. So you'll just go through this process, the little um, import wizard, just proceed, proceed, proceed. I'm not gonna do it because I already have it set up on this sub account, but that is basically how you would import it. So once you have the snapshot imported, you'll switch to that sub account. And then in order to actually set up this snapshot, the first thing we're, we're gonna do is again, click on settings. Now we're gonna go to custom values and you're just gonna fill out these five custom values. So we're gonna input the value for business address, business email, business name, business website, and then your terms of service URL. Essentially what custom values are, it's a way that we can 
use data in specific areas throughout Go High Level. So for all the information that we're putting in here, we're just going to insert that information into our terms of service template. So all you do is just click these three dots, click edit custom value, and then you'll just put in the value for all of these pieces of information. And then to get your terms of service URL, all you're going to do is just come into sites. You'll see under funnels, there's going to be an A2P funnel here. So there's going to be the terms and conditions. And then you'll just click on settings here. You can connect this to a domain. If you're not sure how to connect a domain to, to go high level, I created a video on this as well. That should be on the channel. I'll include it somewhere here. Uh, so you can check that out, link your domain to high level. And then you can also link the domain to this funnel. Once you've done that, you'll just grab this link, come back into your custom values. Again, edit custom value, paste in your link. And that is pretty much it. So you'll just fill out all five of these custom values. Once you've done that, the last step here is the form. So we'll go under forms and then builder. So you'll see an A2P compliance form here. We'll click on the three dots, click edit. So you'll see we have a pretty standard form. So we have our checkbox just to have the user's consent that they're opting in to receive SMS marketing from you. So this is required. And then we have a valid terms of service and privacy policy linked. We can preview this form. And then if we click on this link, it should take us straight to our terms of service page. And just as a disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal counsel in any way, shape or form. If you feel the need, you can get this reviewed by your lawyer or seek uh, proper legal counsel. Uh, but just a disclaimer, this is not legal advice. But I have used this same exact process to get literally hundreds of A2P applications approved. So this process does work. That being said, you'll just want to double check, read through this terms of service. Just double check that all the custom values are actually pulling in properly. In this case, I didn't actually fill out the business name. So that's not showing up here. But you'll just want to double check that everything is correct here. Assuming that it is, we should be pretty much good to go. Now the last step here is you'll just click integrate. You'll click on copy form link. We'll come back into our application here and then just use that link as your landing page opt-in form link. And that is pretty much it guys. Once you've done that, you'll just click submit. And one more thing that is worth mentioning is that A2P applications can take a little bit of time to get approved. I've seen them get approved within the same day. Sometimes I've seen them get approved within several days. So at this stage, you'll just need to be a little bit patient, but assuming you follow the steps outlined in this video, your application should get approved. If for whatever reason, your application gets denied, feel free to reach out, drop a comment on this video, and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Other than that, if you found this video to be helpful, if you got any value out of this, I would really, really appreciate it. If you could drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one.